Scott. Welcome to this quick video with an introduction to the new QuickBooks Online and some of the basic navigation to help you get around and start working in the new QuickBooks Online quickly. My name is Michelle Long. I am a CPA and the owner of Long for Success. I'm an author as well as an international speaker. I'm thrilled to say that I've been training for Intuit since the year 2007 and lately they've been sending me not just all across the United States but also to cities across Canada as well as Australia and London to help teach other accounting professionals about working with QuickBooks Online and help them to get certified. I'm also co-host of the Ultimate Accounting VCon, a virtual conference targeted for accountants and bookkeepers. I'd love to have you join me if you're interested in that next July 2014. Also, I'd encourage you to check out my LinkedIn group. It's a great resource. The reason I'm creating this video for you today is because I realize that a lot of people, when they see the new QuickBooks Online, they're like, oh my gosh, it looks different. It doesn't look like the old QuickBooks Online, or it doesn't look like the desktop version. So today I'm going to help you get going so you can navigate quickly and efficiently. So first of all, let me also tell you that there is a sample company out there that you can play with to help you to get comfortable with the new QuickBooks Online. There's the URL for that sample company, qbo.intuit.com slash redir slash test drive. So you might want to pause and go ahead and jot down that URL. That is a US based sample company but if you're listening from another country I believe you should be able to type that in and access it as well just be aware that it is the US based sample company let's get on into QuickBooks online now and give you a quick overview so you can start working more efficiently in the new QBO first of all this is your home page you'll know you're in the new QBO if you have this left navigation bar over here we're on our home page we have income across the top here. Any of these that I would click on, I'm able to drill down and get a report to show me all the transactions and all the activity in there. Then we have our expenses, same thing. I could click over here and drill down on any of these that I want more detail on. Profit loss, again, I can click and drill down on that. Upper right corner, you'll see a list of your bank accounts. And I can see here I've got 33 transactions that have been downloaded waiting for me to go ahead and add those or deal with those in QuickBooks Online. We've got our credit card accounts and our savings and checking accounts up here. You can also add PayPal in there if you want to. We've got an activities feed over here on the right showing you activities that's going on and you can filter that for certain transactions if you'd like to do that as well. So this is your home page. Then we have the customer center over here on the left nav bar. We have customers. We also have vendors. You'll see the vendor center. These two are basically the same. So on our customers and vendors, we have what we call a money bar going across the top up here. This shows you the transactions as they go from unbilled, so estimates and unbilled activity that you might have entered, unpaid transactions, overdue transactions, and recently paid transactions. So right now, I'm not filtering by anything. So this is a list of my full client list right here, my customer list here. But if I click on, let's say, overdue invoices, that will show me just these 10 that are overdue. And you can see that I've filtered up here. If I want to go back to the full customer list, I just click to clear that filter. So any of these that I would click on just will show me those transactions. And that's really handy because I can do batch activities for that. So for example, on these overdue invoices, I could click to select all of these and quickly send them all a statement or I could send them all an email if I wanted to. Hey, you know, you've got an overdue invoice, please pay that. So you can do batch activity for these things if you want to. You can sort by name, by cap company, overdue balance or overbalance, whichever one you choose. You can search for customers over here. Also, we can customize this. Down here, I could come in here if I want to see some more information. Under this little gear, I maybe want to see their address as well. Maybe I want to see 50 of them at a time instead of 150 at a 300. You can include inactive customers if you want. You can print this list and you can also export this list if you want to right over here on the right. And this again is the same in the vendors or suppliers if you're looking at it from another country. You also can go ahead and directly do some things from here. So it can be your dashboard where you could go ahead and receive payment or print the statement or whatever. Or like if we had unbilled activity showing we can come over here and start the invoice from that so this can be a dashboard that you can use if you want to if you want to see more transactions you can always close the money bar right here by clicking the up or the down arrow right over here so you can do that if you'd like to so that's the customers and the vendors if you've turned on payroll you'll have your employee center here as well then under transactions, this will take you into the banking activity, the downloaded transactions and your bank area where you can go through and deal with those. I'll have another video covering that a little bit later. Then also your sales and your expenses. This is a great place to see all the transactions for sales. 
in here, let's go ahead and clear this and show everything. This will show you all transactions related to sales. So for example, I can look in here and I can see all my estimates, credits, um, recently paid um, estimates. So whatever you wanted to filter for, you can look and filter by date, by customer, whatever it is that you're looking for. You can go through there and filter and see all those transactions at a, at a glance. You can also go through here and do some batch activities. Let's say I wanted to filter and look for all my invoices and I could look by date or by a certain customer. I'm just going to go ahead and say filter all my invoices and I I need to print them off for some reason I could select all of them go ahead and say print all of them or I could send them all if I wanted to print a packing slip it's really very customizable as well as again over here you could go through and do action right from here I could go ahead and receive a payment or print these things individually I can sort it by the status over here if I wanted to I can sort it by the balance by clicking on the headings of the columns you're able to sort things if you need to do that you can change the width of columns you move your cursor um, to where it becomes a uh, two-directional arrow see how that becomes two-directional and then click and drag and drop to change the width of your columns again you can print export or using this gear you can go through and customize some of this one of the things and you can pick and choose which columns you want to see by checking or unchecking these then over here under rows I like to see how you can make them compact so right now they're not compact, they're a little bit wider for each row, or you can make it compact. That allows you to see more on the screen at a given time. Um, so that's just kind of handy too as well. So again, that was all sales transactions. Here's all expenses where you can see all your bills, all your checks, all your credit card charges that you've put in, um, any purchase orders that you have out there, all expense related transactions registers or account histories if you're in a, a different country it might say account histories this will show you the chart of accounts here and I can click on checking to get my register um, for the check register at a glance um, also under reports I'm sorry also under transactions that's where you can print checks if you need to print checks then we get into the reports section and when we're in reports you have several different categories here your recommended frequently run your custom reports instead of memorized reports we can customize reports and you can set that up to automatically email them I'll have that tip for you in another video and then you can go in and see all reports where we've got them grouped according to all the reports and here you would see taxes and have sales taxes and payroll taxes if you've turned on payroll or you'll just see sales tax over here this is where you're gonna to go to create your reports make your tax payments and things like that apps will take you to the app center where you can see apps that will integrate with QuickBooks online if you need additional uh, features and functionality definitely go check out the app center then across the top up here we have another toolbar up here this will show up on almost every page that you're on unless you're currently in a transaction then you won't see that on the magnifying glass that's where we can search and you can click on advanced search to go in there and find whatever it is you're looking for let's say you're looking for a bill and maybe the amount equals five hundred dollars and maybe you know that that bill was entered on a certain date uh, maybe you want to say I want to look for this month so you can add filters to um, so that you'll have additional filters out here um, to search for criteria that you're looking for. So that's the little search icon. Then also the little clock will show you recently entered transactions. So here you'll see all the recent transactions that I've entered and I can click more to get a report of all the transactions that have been recently entered. Then we have the quick create menu. This plus will show you the quick create and I can show less and just see the four most frequent or I can do show more to see the full quick create menu any transaction that you want to enter click the plus up here you click the plus and you have all your customer transactions vendors or suppliers your employees and other including bank deposits transfers journal entries or statements so let's say I wanted to enter an invoice I'll go ahead and click on invoice over here and then I'm going to show you real quickly notice how it drops down now that quick create menu and that toolbar right there doesn't show because I'm in the middle of entering a transaction so I can go ahead and enter this transaction you'll notice this slides out over here if you choose a customer that has some billable time or cost it will slide out to show you that or if you're in the middle of entering a check or an expense and there's already been a bill this will slide out so it will show you related things that you may need to add to that invoice that you're creating one of the other things that I think that's really handy is let's say I have a couple of lines here let me just go ahead and click on something else to add on to this invoice 
and let's go put a rate over here let's make something up one of the things that's nice notice this uh little icon here if you put your cursor over it becomes a four directional line i can actually let me go ahead and add some more lines so i can show you this i can click and drag and drop and rearrange the lines of my invoice or my transaction this is true on all transactions click that little square click and drag and drop and you can rearrange the lines to put it in the order that you want to put that in also in the u.s if you need to change your discount does the discount come before or after sales taxes click this little thing over here and that will switch how the discount is applied you can put your uh, message in there a statement memo if you wanted to down in the bottom left corner of most tra all transactions you can attach a document you can attach an image or whatever you need to up to 25 megabytes so you can attach those receipts Bottom left corner would allow you to cancel or clear this transaction. Down in the bottom here, I could do a print or preview of what it's going to look like. I also could make this recurring. You can set up recurring or memorized transactions. When I make it recurring, I also can go ahead and tell it that I not only want to make this automatically happen on a regular basis, like every month, or every week, maybe I want it to do every week on Wednesday. Um, what's my start date and end date? But this is awesome right here. Automatically send the emails. I can automatically create the invoice and send the email of that invoice to the customers. That's a pretty big deal. A lot of people really like that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just save to get back out of that. So on that invoice that I was entering, and I didn't actually finished did I I was talking to you about that invoice let me go back to an invoice here because I wanted to point out down in the bottom right corner here we have several options save and close or save and new or save and send there's also a keyboard shortcut control alt s control alt s will save that for you as well um, down here also if you have an existing transaction open let's go ahead and open an existing transaction let's go into this credit card expense here down at the bottom here see where it says more this is where if you want to copy that transaction void delete see the journal for that or the audit history the history for that transaction you can do that by clicking on that more button down there um, so that's some things to kind of help you with navigating transactions from up here so again this is any transactions that you want to enter then anything else that you need to do you go to the gear in the upper right corner the gear will give you your settings or your company preferences your chart of accounts uh, the currency center is right here for international clients or customers that are using other versions outside the US will see the currency center all of your lists your products and services instead of an items list we have recurring transactions instead of memorized transactions we have a list of all of our attachments and then over here's tools if you want to import your list your customers your products or services your chart of accounts if you want to import the desktop data um, reconciling the bank reconcile you can do that right from here budgeting Audit log is awesome. I'm going to show you that in just one second, but let me also point out over here, this is where you would, uh, would get to your account. The manage users, this is where you would invite your accountant as a user. You can have two accountant users. Send feedback to Intuit. If there's something that you want them to add or change or a bug that you discover, click on feedback. They really do listen to your feedback. Let me also show you the audit log or the activity log real quickly now. You might hear it called different things. This audit log is awesome because not only does it show you changes in trends, transactions but it also shows you when people log in when they log out you can see I just added a recurring transaction you can see when they add a vendor or a supplier or a customer you can see if they edit that changes that they've made so for example here's where we edited an expense over here to the far right if you click on view it will show you the details of that I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one so I can see what was changed here and it's got this highlighted in yellow the name is what changed if you even wanted to compare to see what it was before and after you'll see that's highlighted in yellow there was no name there before and now we have Bob's burger joint I could click on show changes only and then it's just going to show me that so the audit trailer the activity log is really awesome to get in and find out what's going on with some things now if I go back to my audit log and I did the back by clicking the back button on my mouse um, you may need to go up here and click the back button up here, but my mouse has a little shortcut where I can do it with my thumb. But in the audit log, you also can filter, and this is great, you can filter by a particular user, you can filter for specific dates, and then also filter for specific things here. Um, so, you know, are you looking for reconciliations or people when they signed in and out? This is really a very powerful tool when you're looking for things. So, I hope this has been helpful for you um, to go in and learn a little bit more about QBO. 
Remember, you can go in and play with that sample company and get more comfortable with it, playing around in there and trying things out, entering things, doing things. So I want to thank you for watching. I'm going to have a lot more videos coming up, including one on navigation tips and tricks, helping you move around a lot more efficiently using Chrome, doing some bookmarks, some one-click things, having open windows and things like that. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my blog. If you have additional questions or want additional resources, my LinkedIn group is a great resource, as well as the Intuit Community Forum. So thank you for listening and watch for additional videos coming soon.